about being black in Japan. Let me keep it all the way damn real. Honestly, my experience. Woo! Chat. It's hot in this play. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that your girl has been doing worldwide tour of Japan. I have been in Japan for near enough two weeks now. I have traveled through Tokyo, Hakone, Kyoto, and now your girl is right now currently in Hiroshima. Hiroshima? Hiroshima? Who knows? I know you know because I know you pay attention in history. This is a really sad city. It's got really sad history. This is where the atomic bomb was dropped in the World War II. So I'm going to be doing that after filming this video. So... I just need to use all my good energy right now because I know my energy is going to be hella low after this. So in no particular order, where did you stay? So as I said, I am doing a city to city to city to city tour. And in terms of where we've stayed, we have stayed in Airbnbs. Airbnbs is the most affordable, most best way I personally think to travel through not only just Japan, but most places. But especially in Japan, you probably want to get an Airbnb. It's cheaper. So unlike the UK where when you pay for a hotel room, you're paying for the room in japan when you're paying for a hotel room you're paying per person so it's literally double the charge for you to stay in one room doesn't really make sense to me personally we don't do that in the uk so it actually makes more economical sense for you to stay in an airbnb where you're just charged for the space we were in hakone where we stayed in a very very luxe hotel 10 out of 10 would recommend if you like no other Gorgeous hotel. How has the hospitality so far been? Are most Japanese people welcoming? Everyone has been so nice. I haven't had any kind of encounter where I have thought, hmm, right. Like they're very, very service driven and they're very happy to help. All the way from the airport to the train stations to any service person that I've encountered, there's not been one single rude encounter. Which actually leads me to the next question, which I have got several times racism racism how are they like with black people were they shocked to see you what is it like being black in japan what's it like being a woman in japan there's been a lot of questions surrounding my blackness in japan and honestly guys let me keep it all the way real with you <laughs> nothing they don't care doesn't <laughs> I feel like before I came to Japan, that was the thing that I was most worried about. I was like, I don't want to be a spectacle. I don't want to be as, like someone who's like, ooh, exotic, ooh, a black person. I haven't been there at all. I'm so sorry to disappoint you if that's what you want to hear, but that's not what's happened to me at all. My personal experience as Lydia Dinger in Japan. There's only been one single occasion where one person has taken a picture of me, but that person, that was when we were in asakusa let me fact check but i feel like <laughs> that was more of a comical thing than anything else we were in asakusa and we were temple sightseeing and there was one very elderly couple who took a picture of me i was eating a watermelon so to me i feel like <laughs> it's a thing where it's like oh my god look it's a black person eating a watermelon Muslim then oh my god look it's a black person oh my god they're so amazing no it wasn't that i just think it was just an old person I didn't read into it too much. Nobody's pointed, nobody's stared, nobody's laughed. When I was in Vietnam, I had more stares, points, laughs than any other country I've ever been to. Like in Vietnam, there was a lady who literally came and rubbed my skin and she didn't understand why I was so dark. <laughs> but in Japan, they don't care in the best possible way. They don't care. In terms of dressing, they equally don't care. I was really worried about that. I was thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna have to be like really conservatively dressed because I know they're quite a conservative country. Guys, I have been wearing shorts. I've been wearing skirts that I would normally wear in the UK and they don't care. This is my outfit today. I've got shorts, I've got a crop top. And as you can see, the shorts are short. They're above my knee. I have been wearing this style of outfit. If you go into my Instagram, I've been dressing normally and they don't care. Alongside that, people have asked, what's it like traveling solo in Japan? I am currently not traveling solo in Japan. If you watched my previous vlog, you know that I am here with one of my girlfriends, Lisa. So this is not a solo trip. Lisa just doesn't feature in any of the content because she doesn't want to be in the content, it's fine. Although I haven't been by myself, I still really think that this is somewhere you can come as a solo trip. The only thing that I would have to mention is that you have to be exceptionally good at maps. <laughs> you have to be somebody who's very well organized, somebody who can read maps, somebody who's good at timekeeping, somebody who is just more organized than me because I have heavily, heavily relied on Lisa on this trip because I am terrible at orientation. I don't know where North is at any given point in time. I don't know how to not get lost. I don't know how to not get on the wrong train. 
these are things that I struggle with in London. So in Japan where it's even like it's busy but just like any other city anywhere in the world i think you just have to have your wits about you don't be doing dodgy stuff don't be going in dodgy alleys by yourself in the middle of the night like the next realm of questions is kind of around communication do i speak japanese how has it been like communicating it's all about communication i don't speak japanese no i can barely say thank you very much which is well i can barely say it so <laughs> What is thank you very much? Uh, as a Google. Google is really great. Um, mm. Arigato gozaimasu. I've literally just been saying arigato gozaimasu, arigato gozaimasu, arigato gozaimasu, arigato. It sounded like a damn broken record. I don't speak a hint of Japanese. However, communication hasn't been an issue. And it's funny because I hadn't even thought about that until I received the question and I just thought, oh yeah, how have we been communicating? But we just have. So most people speak or understand some English, even if it is just the very, very basic. But besides that, there's English translations pretty much in everything. In stations, there's an English option for you to look at the ticket machine. Most restaurants have English menus. And then besides that, the good old international language of pointing, you know, sign and you, where going to loss <laughs> thank you just international sign abbreviations is what we've been going by and it's been completely fine i haven't felt frustrated at any point even when we were in tokyo we went to the like the red light district we went to a bar and we had an entire evening of a conversation with two japanese guys we didn't speak any english and we didn't speak any japanese but we communicated a good hour and a half using google translate would you imagine a few apps have been incredibly crucial and we wouldn't have got very far without them i.e google google maps and a few other apps that have been really really helpful in our time and have assisted us and made this whole experience really easy but google translate oh my god that's your girl that's your home girl what's transportation and the train system like like i said busy i want to say confusing but i don't mean confusing because it's very clear to understand but it just has to be someone who understands maps <laughs> I am very poor at navigation. I'm very poor at orientation. I literally don't know where I am at any given point in life. At any given station, there's so much happening. Then there's like the JR line, then there's like this line, then there's this line. There's a lot of lines. They're confusing to me, basically. That's what I'm gonna say. For buses and stuff, Google Maps is great because it literally tells you which stop to come off at and it like buzzes on your phone. They're really up to date in terms of GPS and you finding yourself on your phone. It can be easy, but equally, it's also very complex because there's a lot going on in stations. I can literally end up at the other side of the country without knowing that I'm on the other side of the country. Are Japanese men an eye catcher? Do you know what? I can't lie. I have seen one, two, three snacks yes i appreciate a good looking man in any type of race if you're fine you're fine there's nothing to take away from you being fine i've seen fine black men fine white men fine japanese men there's fine men exist everywhere in life okay if you're worried about fine men they got fine men here are there any black people honestly i can probably count on my hands the amount of black people i've seen here in two weeks i saw three in one go <laughs> who were friends probably literally no more than 10 something that has shocked and surprised you on this trip the amount that i can eat <laughs> variation of food in japan is insane the food is delicious out here everything is pretty much deep fried which is amazing <laughs> a lot of flavor a lot of ramen i love ramen in the uk we get a lot of tonkotsu type of ramen here they have so much ramen ramen that i like ramen that i don't like a lot of ramen it's not all seafood it's not all sushi it's not all just raw fish there is a plethora and i mean a plethora of food that i guarantee you will enjoy if you come to japan is the japanese tourism board listening to any of this because really and truly I'm ready. I'm ready to come back again. I've also been genuinely surprised at the amount of things there are to do in Japan. I feel like I definitely need to come back and see a lot of it again because it feels like I haven't done any of it. Oh, I've got a dead leg. Ah, pins and needles. Oh. One final thing that has surprised me is how they shower. Showers, you sit down, there's a seat and the mirror is really low down and then you sit down and have a shower. I didn't quite get it. In the first hotel, I was like, why is the mirror so low? Is it like for you to look at your coochie? I didn't get it. Like a really luxe bucket bath, if I should say so myself. Have you tried sake? Yes. <laughs> we got very wasted on sake one night. <laughs> sake is a rice wine. It's quite strong. It's very, very strong. So we went to a sake bar and we tried different sakes from different regions of Japan. And all I will say, they're all very strong. Okay, that's all you gotta know. Share your packing secrets for Japan. Pack light. We came in May, middle of May to the end of May, and it's been very hot the temperature has reached 33 degrees on some days for the most part it's been about 28 29 it's 
been very hot so pack light come with one single suitcase i have a big suitcase that i've been just navigating my way with don't bring like a suitcase and a little mini hold one and a backpack don't do that to yourself because it's very busy the stations any intersection where you need to change you will get bored of yourself if you're going to be staying in airbnbs pack light wash your clothes Unless you're gonna be doing Instagram babe, doing Slay Queen like I was, pack light. The next round of questions are based on cost, budget, figures, because you know, people never really speak about that when they're traveling. They're like, oh, you know, it wasn't that expensive, it wasn't, uh. I'm ready to give you facts. I'm ready to give you figures. So, when we were booking this trip, there was a sale, and so the ticket was actually inexpensive. We went via Poland, so we went to Poland, and from Poland we connected to Tokyo. The flights cost 447 pounds, and that's obviously there and back. So I thought that was, that was pretty decent. In terms of accommodation, as I mentioned before, there is two of us. So we split all of our accommodation costs, obviously, into two. For two weeks, it cost us £1,676. Obviously, that's divided by two £838 for two weeks in Japan. So Tokyo is one of the places that we got the least amount of space for our money. Obviously, it's Tokyo is like one of the biggest cities in the world. So it's going to be very expensive. And despite the fact that our Airbnb was actually some way away from the center and the bustle it was still quite expensive and we didn't really get much in terms of space this place here in hiroshima is huge just the lounge area itself is probably double the size of the whole hotel room that we got in tokyo and we've got a lounge area we've got one bedroom and then we've got like a traditional japanese bedroom it's really big it's like a uk size flat but this was one of the cheaper finds another mandatory cost that you have to consider is your jr travel pass or well, depends actually it depends on if you're doing a city city tour like we were but your jr travel pass and your either your prepaid sim card or your data bundle thing jr pass that cost me 316 pounds and the sim card cost 22 pounds so altogether 338 pounds that's for the travel and to stay connected in terms of staying connected i would highly highly recommend that you get a sim card from the moment we got off the plane it's been smooth it's been so easy to use i've been connected at all points you can't make normal phone calls but you can make wi-fi calls you can also get a pocket wi-fi i personally wouldn't go for the pocket wi-fi i bought my phone so my phone is unlocked but if you have a contract phone i think it might not be unlocked therefore you might need to go for the pocket wi-fi it's just a separate device that you have to carry along with you to have wi-fi but that just seems very clunky if your phone is unlocked Get yourself a sim card i got mine from japan rail pass you can order it and you can either get it delivered to your house to your home country or you can get it you can pick it up in one of the stations once you actually get to japan the jr pass why is it important it's because it's going to be your ticket to absolutely everywhere there's no way we would have done this trip if we didn't have the jr pass lastly is spending money that's the question that everyone has been asking and that's the question that everyone usually avoids i don't mind sharing i put aside a thousand pounds for spending whilst i was in japan i actually wasn't sure if that was going to be too little or not i didn't know i just always had a perception that japan is really expensive japan is not that expensive your accommodation and your jr pass is going to be the most expensive thing that you're going to be paying for besides that eating out honestly most meals have been under seven pounds and i mean nice meals in the uk nando's cost like what 15 pounds per person per meal it hasn't been that so one of the most expensive places we've eaten has been an italian like a western place basically we had pizza and it was about 2250 yen which is roughly about 15 pounds something with this current time and that was that was quite expensive for a meal so most meals have been around the thousand yen 1500 at the very most it's not expensive i do have to add expenses is very relative and it's really down to the individual if you're somebody who really enjoys really 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 fancy things then obviously the thousand pounds is gonna get deleted very quickly <laughs> but if you're somebody who just like i don't know like sometimes really nice things and sometimes like mediocre things i don't know what average means to you but average for me i haven't spent a grand in two weeks and also i have to add that we haven't been drinking a lot because we've had a really packed itinerary so we've only got wasted just the one time <laughs> and that was on sake and sake is actually quite cheap and drinking usually takes a lot of money you know that in any country so it just depends expenses is really down to the individual what you like but a thousand pounds for two weeks you'll be more than fine you will go back home with some change in summary japan 10 out of 10 would recommend definitely come if you're solo still come if you don't speak japanese still come do i see myself coming back yes 100 percent but i need lisa again <laughs> i will put any links of anything that i've done that i thought was amazing in the vlog so be sure to watch the vlogs for all the locations that we stayed at all the airbnb links i hope you enjoyed this i hope this has been really useful i really actually enjoy sitting down and recapping i might do this more for all of my trips that i've been on share any experiences in the comments and i'm gonna go now and whew, 
see the sights of Hiroshima and I know it's gonna be a sad day. But after that, I'm gonna have some ramen. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel, share, follow me on Instagram, all of that good stuff. And I shall see you somewhere on the internet, guys.